Without question, people today are overwhelmed, worn out, beaten down, and fed up. If political turmoil and economic uncertainty weren't making life hard enough, the moral and cultural freefall we're witnessing has left many folks wondering if we are near a breaking point. Headlines are dominated by mob violence, senseless destruction, and political corruption. Almost everywhere you look, you see dire news. The situation also appears bleak from a spiritual perspective. Secularism and moral relativism permeate our culture. Rampant sin and perversion are celebrated throughout society. Anti-Christian sentiment continues to gain traction and evangelicals are openly mocked in the news and entertainment media. Meanwhile, new scandals and schisms are exploding within the church. Any one of those trends is a cause for enough concern, but taken together, you get the sense that society is sinking into complete spiritual disaster. It's easy to see why so many believers are struggling with fear and a defeatist attitude. After all, what is there to be hopeful about in a world that is sprinting toward destruction and hell. To begin with, we need to remember that while sin and lawlessness are widely celebrated in what seem like unprecedented ways, the kind of moral chaos is nothing new. The human heart is the same as it has always been. In fact, many societies before ours were just as wicked and hostile to God's word and his people if not more so. Consider the world into which the early church was born. Roman culture was preoccupied with indulging every sinful impulse and appetite. Gross idolatry and sexual perversions dominated society, touching virtually every aspect of daily life. Artwork and artifacts found in ancient ruins offer a startling look at the sinful world into which Paul and the other New Testament writers lived and preached. The moral climate was shocking, even by today's standards. What's more, that society violently opposed and oppressed the early church. Christians were falsely accused, hunted, tortured, and murdered, all because of their faith. The threat of death was constant. Living in the midst of such widespread immorality and facing hostility from the surrounding culture, what kept believers in the early church joyful, hopeful, fruitful, and encouraged? When you and I face testing and hardship, how does God expect us and equip us to respond? Let us consider some of these scriptures. And do this, knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Therefore let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the day, not in revelry and drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lusts. Romans 13, 11 through 14. A quiet life, to mind your own business and to work with your own hands as we commanded you, that you may walk properly toward those who are outside and that you may lack nothing. 1 Thessalonians 4, 11 through 12. But you, brethren, are not in darkness, so that this day should overtake you as a thief. You are all sons of the light and sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of the darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and as a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, 
who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Therefore, comfort each other and edify one another, just as you are also doing. 1 Thessalonians 5, 4-11 God bless.